Hey friends, Andy Jenkins here at the Hilltop. In the previous episode, I outlined pretty concisely, I think, uh, that when we step into this topic of physical healing, that's what we're on. We're not talking about emotional health, even though there's a great place for that. And we have all sorts of teachings and books and courses available on our website about that. Uh, really, we're talking about physical healing, and I made the case, I think, that really walking in that fundamentally begins with understanding who God is, that He is good, that He is for us, and Jesus demonstrates exactly what He's like, and healing was, and I believe still is, one of the touch points of the kingdom that demonstrates the presence and power of of God among us. Now, in this episode, I want to tackle the idea of faith. Uh, you might could categorize it like this. Uh, previous talk, we want to think right about who God is and what he's like. This talk, we want to think right about faith and the place of faith in healing because so many people, self, self-included, uh, we can get this one wrong. And if we're not careful, we can make faith into a work, uh, faith into a task, faith into an action that you must do to a certain level in order to get your healing. Now, to be clear, I... I really believe that the Bible shows us that faith is not a work. It's not a thing that we must do in a certain measure in order to earn or obtain a healing. So to put in perspective, there are a lot of people out there that argue that if you don't have enough faith, God cannot heal you. In other words, these people wrongly assume that we handcuff God by our lack of belief. That somehow not having enough mental agreement that he can do something restrains him from being able to actually do it. And there are Bible verses that seem to, when I believe, ripped out of context, affirm that those people are accurate. However, the whole point of talking today about physical healing and taking on this idea of faith is to show you that maybe they're looking at it a little bit short-sightedly and only from half of the equation. When you look through the New Testament, we see something radically strange about the faith issue. Here it is. There is no formula on how much faith or what kind of faith is required for you and I to be healed, for anybody else to be healed. Sometimes, Jesus healed people who absolutely believed. They had total faith. The kind of faith that moves mountains. The the kind of faith that he just applauds. Other times, he healed people who didn't believe at all. Uh, Then there's this kind of intertwined, um, some doubt, mingled with some belief, Uh, there's an instance where he healed a man who didn't even know who he was. And then there is an instance where he healed uh, someone based on the faith of the friends. Let let me give you some examples. I've I've written them down here uh, in this book. By the way, if you'll look down in the show notes, I, I do have a book available uh, it's it's not a new book. It's one I've had for several years. We found some in our garage when we were cleaning up the shipping station and setting that up about a year ago. And so we've made them really cheap, basically the price of the shipping and handling. We don't want to throw them away. We'll send it to you. Uh, and then there is an ebook and a mini course down available that's free. And then there is a full-blown healing workshop course Uh, that you can take advantage of, all in the show notes there below. Uh, What I'm teaching you today, and previous episode, and probably one more talk after this, uh, really comes from that course. It's a a small slice taken out of of, of all of that. So in in there, uh, in in that book, in fact, the the chart's on page 40 of that book, if, if you want to grab the book, 
I just say a lack of faith is not the issue. So on the far left side of the chart, it says, you know, faith issue. How, how much faith did the person have? And then center column, it's a three-column chart. Center column, the scripture, and then the far right column says, okay, here's the story where this is illustrated. So I've got, I've got five categories. Category number one, no faith. Category number two, partial faith. Category number three, total faith. Category number four, other people's faith, not the person being healed at all. Category number five, sometimes it's backed up with action, like something you tangibly, physically go do. So I want to walk you through these, and uh, I'll put these down in the show notes there for you so that you can uh, just go through, and you can look up the verses, and then you can uh, t- take whatever action you want. No faith. So in John 5, there's a man sitting at the pool of Bethesda, uh, or some translations say Bethsaida, uh, for 38 years. He's lame. Jesus walks up to him, and he says, do you want to be healed? And the man makes this excuse. He says, well, yeah, yeah, but yeah, but you know, I can't be because every time an angel stirs the waters, somebody jumps in before me. Now, what people believed in that culture was that if the water started moving in that pool, it's kind of like a little fountain. If the water started moving, first person in healed because it was an angel doing the work. Now, you imagine a man that's lame. He's not that mobile. So other people who might have a bum arm, something else, uh, maybe even they're, they're deaf, but they can see those waters. They're physically whole, otherwise jumping in first. Jesus says, man, be well. There's no faith issue. Just be well. Man picks up his mat, takes off, healed. Matthew 8, 15. Jesus walks into Simon Peter's house, and Simon Peter's mother-in-law is sick with the fever. There's no mention of any faith. Jesus walks up, touches her, raises her up. She's well. Now, interesting note, this happened on the Sabbath as well, um, because we hear at sundown, she gets up, she makes a meal for them, and everybody, sundown was the end of the day, end of the Sabbath, everybody starts gathering together at the house, and this is where the passage says, he healed them all. I'm going to come back to what it means that he healed them all in the next episode. Uh, Luke, Luke 13, 12. Jesus is walking through the synagogue. He sees a woman that's been over for 18 years. Like she's just hunched over. She can't stand straight. He heals her without any mention of faith occurring at all. No faith, no problem. God is not constrained by that box. Um, Another category here, partial faith. Now, you might remember this. Uh, Jesus is walking down the Mount of Transfiguration in Mark 9, and there is a man at the bottom of the hill with his son, and the disciples, other than the three, Peter, James, and John, that went up the mountain with Jesus, have been trying to cast this demon out of this boy unsuccessfully. So Jesus gets frustrated with the disciples, not with the man, not frustrated with the child needing to be healed, uh, Jesus says, if you believe, and the man says, I believe, help my unbelief. Get that partial faith. I believe, help my unbelief. Uh, Matthew 8, 2, there's another example. A leper comes up to Jesus, approaching him somewhat It might be respectfully, it might be cautiously. He says, if you are willing, you you could heal. Like, it's not this total, steadfast assurance. Partial faith. Partial faith, not a problem. We do see examples in the New Testament of of total faith. Uh, There is an example in Matthew 9, 18, Jairus, he's a ruler of the synagogue. He tells Jesus to come with him to lay his hands on his sick daughter, 
and she will live. Now, Jesus says, I'll, I'll go with you, and he's about to go. Uh, you might know that story is when he's about to leave, a Syrophoenician woman, um, or rather a woman with a flow of blood, probably hemorrhaging, she moves through the crowd and says, if only I can touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made well. And she does touch it, and she is, and he feels power go out of him. He turns her faith, not even not even a prayer, and not even him saying anything. It's just like she catches him while he's in motion going the other direction, and then she's healed. He pauses, talks with her, affirms her faith. Jairus' daughter, in the meantime, dies, and then he goes and raises her from the dead. Two instances, a total faith. Now, the Syrophoenician woman, that's Mark 7, 24, has her daughter healed of a demon, and her faith, total faith, commended. Uh, Matthew 9, 29, Jesus heals two blind men, and Matthew writes down when he's pinning the story there, he says that it was, here's the quote, according to their faith. Totally healed because it was according to their, you can just fill in the blank right there, their total faith. Uh, a few instances we see in the New Testament of people healed based on other people's faith. I just mentioned one, the Syrophoenician woman whose daughter, uh, Mark seven twenty four was healed. But, but we see this. Uh, one of the most famous stories in Scripture is when the friends of a paralytic climb up on the roof while Jesus is teaching in a house, and they start tearing up this roof and lower their friend, because it's so crowded, you can't even get to the door. Too many people. So they find a way to go through, and all the houses were kind of stuck together, built together like an apartment complex type thing. So they find a way up on the roof, go over, however long this takes, drag the friend, go through the roof, lower the friend right at the place where Jesus is either sitting and teaching or standing and teaching. <laughs> the, think about the awkwardness of that if you're the host. The scripture says, when Jesus looked up and saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven. And then he said, arise and walk. Now catch that. He healed sin. I know that theologically boggles the mind, right? Because, you know, we, we think, well, that person's got to ask for the forgiveness. Right there, Jesus healed the man's sin and healed his ability to walk based on their faith. The friends who lowered the man through the roof in the middle of a crowd while Jesus was speaking. Another instance, Luke 7, uh, 1 through 9, a Roman centurion comes up to Jesus. This one is also in the book of Matthew. And he says, my, my servant is sick, but you, you don't even have to come. You just say the word from here and the servant will be made well. And Jesus marvels and says, I've not seen this great of faith in all of Israel. Now, it was total faith. It was also Jesus healing based on someone else's faith. So we see this again. No faith, not a problem. Partial faith doesn't mean you're going to get partial healing. Not a problem. Total faith, okay. He'll heal according to that total faith. But he's not going to penalize you if it's not there. He also even heals based on other people's faith. And, and then there are these instances where in the New Testament you see that people are healed as they follow through on an action. Um, and, and I'm going to get into that one a little bit in the next episode because there is this kind of healing that I think is based on action. Luke 17, 14, it says that there's some lepers that were healed as, as they went. Uh, you think in the Old Testament, uh, Jesus tells a man, go dip in the Jordan River seven times. And as he did, Naaman the leper is healed of leprosy and becomes whole. So here's, here's what's interesting about all this. 
Jesus did criticize the disciples who were told to minister healing uh, to the man whose son was being tossed into the fire by a demon. And he, he's the one that said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Again, another instance of somebody also there being healed based on someone else's faith, if you, if you see that. So a lot of these kind of straddle categorization. He, he did not chastise the man needing ministry. He got on to disciples who were empowered to impart the healing. It's Mark 9, 23 through 25. If, if you're a church leader, a minister in a formal or informal capacity, it means this. You don't rebuke people to whom you minister, serve, lead, pray for because of their lack of faith. That is a burden that you carry, not the burden they carry. It's on you to believe that the Lord has imparted that gift to you and then to, as he would say, freely you've received, freely dispense, freely freely give it. So, so this lack of faith, it's not always a negative and it's not something that you could fit into the box. Here's, here's what I do see. Uh, some people look at the book of Mark, about chapter 6, when Jesus is preaching in his hometown, and they say, well, it, it says that Jesus could do no mighty work there, and he marveled because of their unbelief. Here's what I think. If you read the text there, Jesus says that a prophet is not without honor except in his hometown, and he could do no mighty work there. Pause. Break right there. It was a lack of honor that caused his ability to be restrained. I mean, in all these other stories that I just walked you through, uh, people are honoring Jesus. They're deferring to him. They're looking to him as like there's a respect, there's an admiration, there, there's doubt for, for some of them for sure. There's this wavering for sure. But what seemed to restrain him at his hometown was a prophet is not without honor except in his hometown. And then two sentences later, two verses later, it, it says uh, he marveled because of their unbelief. It's almost like Mark tells us, hey, the issue was there was just total dishonor in the place. They're all saying, what, what, what is this guy preaching these things and trying to do this stuff? Is, is this not the carpenter? Is this not, you know, Mary's son, Joseph's kid? Is, is this not the guy that we... We saw grow up here. And then Mark seems to infer, in addition to that, he was also shocked because they just did not have faith. See, the honor issue is what I think is more important than the faith issue. In Luke 13, 34 through 35, uh, Jesus, he weeps over Jerusalem and he says, Oh, I long to gather you together. As a mother hen gathers her brood to protect you, to shelter you, to provide for you, but you would not come to me. And then he has this phrase, you will not see the presence and power of God, is what he's inferring, until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In other words, you're not going to see his presence and power until you honor the one who was sent by him to serve you in this supernatural capacity. Um, you see this happening in Matthew 10, 40 through 42. People receive based on the honor they offer to the one God sends to them. Sometimes he sends the stuff to you in a person that somehow that package defies what you expected. Point is this. Faith, it's not... not not the driver. Uh, it doesn't restrain what God can do. So if you've been in the position where you've thought, I'm dealing with this, this problem persists, somebody in a pulpit even told you or someone with a position or a title even said, 
it, your issue is because you don't believe hard enough and they've turned it into this thing that you think, well, I'll never be good enough because I'll never get my faith quotient up to some artificial level that that person set. It, it wasn't a problem. Not for Jesus, not ever. See, put it together, previous talk, God is good. He loves his children. He loves you. He doesn't harm them. He heals them. Faith, this episode, it's not a work that we do to earn a healing. A lack of faith doesn't disqualify you. The bigger issue is honor. If someone's willing to receive they can receive healing. We'll unpack that and thinking right about healing in the next talk. My prayer for you as I close is that the Lord bless you. He keep you. He be gracious to you. If you have felt restrained, belittled because of a lack of faith, or if someone has tripped you up theologically, it made you feel less than, Oh, let me remove that burden for uh, for you, from you, and just tell you I've got faith that you can borrow, that you can break through, that he can make all things new in the same way that he healed people of total faith in the Scripture, people of partial faith in the Scripture, people of uh, wavering faith, even people of no faith at all, and then these people that were borrowing other people's faith that they didn't even know they were using other people's faith, and he's still healed. May he reach out, touch you. Grace and peace, friend. I'll see you soon.